world-class education, hands-on programs, and a high return on investment. Germany is an excellent option for anyone looking to do their MBA. According to a guest on this week's India to Germany podcast, Akshay Sharma. Akshay is an alumnus of WHU Otto Weisheim School of Management and currently working as VGI Project Manager, Digitalization and Change Management at the Violent Group. After a bachelor in technology from India and five years of experience in this field, Akshay decided to do his MBA and specialize in business strategy and innovation. He tells us about his experience, what speaks in favor of an MBA from Germany, what its advantages and disadvantages are in comparison to a degree from the US, and the job prospects after finishing your course. Welcome, Akshay. It's great to have you on the podcast. Hi, Paras. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to meet and talk to you again. You're most welcome. Thank you as well. Um, so, Akshay, yeah, today we are here to discuss the topic of MBA in Germany. Yes. Uh, it, it's a really interesting topic, I think. Um, but before we start, perhaps you could introduce yourself a bit to our listeners. Yes, for sure, for sure. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Akshay Sharma. I originally come from Faridabad in India, in North India, and I'm now living in Remscheid uh, here in Germany. So I came to Germany in 2018 for my MBA at Vehau Autobishim School of Management with around five years of work experience mix in IT and printing and packaging firm. And thereafter my MBA, I have joined here Violin Group Business Services as a project manager for digitalization and change management. So I think that would be my short intro to everyone. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, so you did your MBA from the WHU. I, I have heard of it. I mean, I um, yeah had the chance to meet a couple of people who have actually founded startups here in Berlin who were originally from WHU. Um, yes, so yeah, yes. How, how was WHU your... WHU is very famous for its startups. We have seven uh, unicorns now from WHU and more uh, are reaching the unicorn level. And if you see the top world rankings for uh, business schools with most uh, startups, we have ranks among the top five. And even on the other side, when you talk about a normal uh, full-time MBA program, we have is among top 100 business schools uh, in the global rankings. It's around 61 now, I think. I'm not really sure with the latest rank, but it has been getting much better and better. And it is ranked number one by Financial Times uh, in Germany. So it is one of the top B schools uh, here in Germany. All right. Okay. It's um, But uh, before I moved to Germany, I did not know about the institute. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's great. Uh, is it like a new institute or the, is the program? Uh, no, no. That's, uh, that's a very uh, important topic that a lot of people outside Germany don't know about the business schools in Germany because MBA is comparatively a new program in Germany as compared to USA, Canada, Australia, England, and all these other countries. Uh, I believe MBA emerged more as a management program in 1990s where you can also see a lot of B-school programs related to full-time MBA emerging uh, for international students. So it's comparatively a bit new, but now we have a very strong alumni across Germany. And it's true not just for Wehau, but also for other top B-schools like Mannheim Business School, ESMT Berlin, HHL, uh, Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. So all these programs are growing at a much faster pace. And for example, when I joined Wehau in 2018, it was ranked around 112 or something in global rankings, but now it's 61. So it has drastically come uh, forward in the global MBA rankings. Okay. Yeah. So it's the popularity is also growing. I mean, as uh, Germany's popularity also grows and it becomes more known for MBAs, let's say. Yes. And companies are now opening up a bit more to international uh, candidates, international students, uh, job seekers here in Germany, and also they are more open now to the MBA graduates. Right. Okay. So yeah, how was your experience at WHU? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yes, well, I really enjoyed uh, my MBA at Wehau. It was a very good experience. We had a small class, usually here in Germany. Uh, for MBA, you have a small class somewhere ranging between 30 to 60, not more than that. 
and at we have we had a very international class with people uh, from all across the globe we could learn from them how they are working in their countries and the most important thing was we had three international excursions during our mba program that means that we went to kellogg's business school in usa for our classes we went to seeds in fudan these are the best business schools in china for our classes then we also went to im bangalore uh, in india for our classes so it was a very very international program the professors are amazing you get to learn a lot it's a really interactive environment where you work with them and then you get to work on life projects that is one very innovative thing that we have in german b school so when you attend a class or you are attending a course you get a chance to direct uh, to directly work with the companies on a life project in which they are actually working so that is very very nice and also we how is known for startups and entrepreneurship so there are a lot of events that go on in we have like three day startup where you can uh, join in for three days you leave the entire world behind and you just concentrate on a business idea that you can develop from scratch with the help of mentors we participated in that we got second and a lot of vcs reached out to us uh, on setting up the startup but i think you're not that ready at that time Okay. <laughs> then uh, there are a lot of global mba competitions that we joined and uh, we have really encouraged us they paid for our travel our stay everything we went to kellogg's design thinking challenge in chicago we went for innovation in finance uh, challenge in zurich and we won most of it and that was really great and uh, our business school supported us for our entire program for these things excellent that sounds really nice and that is the that is so the already... good thing for a small batch you are more interacting with your professors with the management you get to know people on a more personal level and that also helps in your professional as well as personal development hmm so it sounds actually like a sort of a, like a um, like a hidden gem sort of i don't know a hidden gem i mean i want to say because at least uh, like when i did my masters and that was of course a, a while uh, more than nearly actually 10 years ago that i did my masters and at that time of course i did not think of germany as an option for let's say mba mm-hmm. but now from what you describe it sounds actually great um on the one hand in terms of the what it offers mm-hmm. but also in terms of um yeah i think uh, the um maybe the costs and other things i'm sure you will talk about oh, yes. it so yes yeah. actually there are a lot you of advantages to... of uh, doing mba in germany like when i was planning my mba i had uh, looked into all uh, schools or top b schools in different countries whether it was uk us canada or england that was the main uh, aimed countries for me i went through different programs their costing and everything uh, there are multiple advantages uh, but before that i would tell why i chose germany basically i'm from an engineering background so i thought uh, mba is always known for uh, not mba germany is always known for engineers and i thought if i can do an mba from germany i could really emerge more as a techno manager and there are a lot of opportunities in germany for techno managers uh, especially in it and digitalization roles and i have been working uh, in digitalization roles in india and thought to go for an mba here and germany is growing very very fast now in terms of it if you see there are hundreds thousands of opportunities emerging in germany as compared to other countries because germany is now in a league where it is fastly developing its uh, digital infrastructure us and uk have already had that leap they have already developed in that part so germany is still growing and you have a lot of opportunities for these kind of jobs so that was one main aim for me or one main motivation for me to join germany and <laughs> the cherry on the top was lower tuition and higher scholarships yeah. that you uh, get in germany plus the very stable visa policies unlike us uk or australia the visa policies in germany are very stable yeah that's true yeah yeah i mean the, uh, i think all the points that you mentioned are very valid um in terms of like the tuition fee and the scholarships uh could you give like an idea of approximately how much one should plan for in terms of expenses and tuition fees yes. so basically all uh, top german programs or i think all german programs here in germany are for around 15 months to 18 months 
depending upon okay. uh, the first 12 months is mostly your core courses your uh, electives and everything basically everything what you are studying after that uh, there is a master thesis or business cases that you have to write that is usually compulsory in all b schools so you have 4 to 5 months where you can write a master thesis on any topic or you can write a business case for me i wrote a business case and a business plan and you can always uh, do an internship along with it so i would say that uh, for this time period you need around 10 to 15000 euros as the living cost which you which also has to be shown for your visa uh, as a student visa for germany uh, in form of blocked account and okay. then the tuition ranges between uh, 20000 to 40000 euros without scholarships so all top b schools have uh, tuition around 38 to 39 and all the second tier third tier then they are something around 25 20 or 15 but it is not free in germany i think that is one misconception that most of the uh, candidates have that education is completely free in germany but mba is not free because mba is considered as a niche course and usually people end up earning at a higher end after their mba so the government or the or the universities don't need make these courses as tuition free okay so even if uh, i do an mba at a public university i still have to pay this tuition yes, fee yes that's true it it would be a bit less but then it would depend what rank the university is and when we talk about mba this is what uh, we have been uh, interacting or discussing with a lot of uh, expecting candidates on our uh, facebook page that for mba you should not look for public uh, universities or private universities what should uh, what you should look for is b schools what are the top b schools in germany and then up start applying for such uh, programs because for example in top 5 uh, b schools we have mannheim business school which is part of mannheim university which is sort of a public university but apart from that we have hhl frankfurt school of finance and management esmt all are private uh, b schools ah yeah okay, okay that makes sense okay so it's i think if we compare okay. that to india it's something like that we have isb in india which is a private business school but it is among the top b schools and the fees is same as iim which is a public university that is 30 lakhs or something all right yeah but still i think in comparison to let's say other options like in the us and all yeah, it's, it's still much much, much more affordable true, true. it's much economical if you see the cost of mba in us just the tuition lands around 1.2 crores without uh, 1.2 crores inr without a scholarship and similarly in austria it is around 70 to 80 lakhs inr in uk it's around 65 to 75 lakhs inr and the rate of in uh, rate of return or the return on investment is much lower in other countries return on investment in mba is much much higher that i could say as some of the benefits uh, of why one should opt or could opt for mba in germany as this is one of the points in that all right yeah and then um, yeah i would be curious to hear what other benefits you think uh, are yes, there yes sir i think the first one i already mentioned the tuition fees is uh, more economical and the return on investment is much higher for example uh the highest tuition fee for these top b schools is around 39 and you can always apply for scholarships you get scholarships around 7 to 8000 euros and then it comes out to be 30 33 and the if you see the average salary packages of these b schools it's around 75000 euros so you are already earning double of it uh, in the first that's salary that's nice mm-hmm. scheme second uh, important thing is germany offers an 18 month job search visa that i think you would also have uh, looked at when you were doing your masters so and this was not there for any of the other countries in us uk it's very difficult uh, to get such visas to just look out for jobs after your masters program this was one important factor for me as well uh, while coming to germany yeah. third thing mm-hmm. i would say is less saturation in job market if you see a lot of internationals are already traveling to usa canada england australia but germany is more like in your terms i would say as a hidden gem a lot of people have now started looking towards germany and germany is a strong economy and it has a very good job market so there's less saturation in it and you can get better roles uh, here if you are 
uh, equally qualified as compared to other countries. Fourth important thing is, I'm not sure if you know, you get a tax break on your tuition and the expenditure you did during your course. So it's, I didn't know this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. then it's a very good point. And it's very beneficial for you. For example, if you if in your MBA, you spent about 30,000 euros as your tuition and around 10,000 of your living cost uh, and traveling expenditure, everything, consider it around 35, 36 or something like that. So you can get a tax break on that. So once you start earning, this is considered as deductible. For example, if you earn 70,000 euros a year, then this 35,000 is deducted from your 70,000 and you have to pay tax only on 35,000 euros. And then you are already in a very low tax bracket and you get a lot of money back. So if you deduct it or in totality, your tuition is just around 15 to 20,000 even for these top B schools. Uh, that's a very important yeah. point. Okay, yeah, that one should know about all these things before uh, applying. Yes. That's great. So you okay. think that it is 35, 40, but ultimately after the tax, you it is around 15 to 20 for you. And then you are having much higher salaries and 15 to 20 can be easily paid off. The, the fifth point is good scholarship. All these German B schools have really good scholarships. And there are two types of scholarships when we talk about these B schools. First is based on the time you got and admit to this B school. The earlier you apply, you would get something called as early bird scholarships. It ranges around 3,000 to 5,000 euros. And if you get your admit in the first round itself, you can easily get uh, this scholarship. And then on addition, you can get scholarships based on these universities. For example, in Behao, I got Behao Leadership Scholarship plus the early bird scholarship. So that was a good amount for me. And and this the second scholarship, how much is the amount usually, or what can one expect? It is around four thousand to five thousand euros. Okay, so that also further reduces your tuition fees yes. quite a bit, right? And then, in addition to it, once your course starts, you get a dad scholarship as well. So, wow. <laughs> dad scholarship okay. is a bit variable, but not variable, a bit different how universities give them. For example, at Vehau, uh, all international students get dad, so they divide the entire amount into 30 or 25 people and everyone gets equal amount. But for example, in HHL, they give uh, the amount only to top five students. So they divide it only among five students. The students might get a higher amount, but on the other end, uh, in business schools like Vehau, everyone gets some amount. And I think for us, it came around 2,200 euros for, from that. Okay. So you see, <laughs> the Great. tuition is constantly getting reduced. <laughs> yeah, it all adds up yeah yeah for sure and the other good thing is while you're applying for mba process these b schools even the top ones do not have an application fee except manem i believe and if you see in us australia england they already have a hundred dollar or eighty dollar ninety dollar tuition fee and that is sometimes i don't feel very good that okay you have a admissions process but why you're charging students so much and the good thing in yeah. Germany is they do not have such uh, application fees. You can freely apply without any cost. And then once you are selected, you take a decision, then you pay the university. That's nice. Yeah, I know I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Saves some money as well. Yeah, for yes. sure. And another important thing or good thing that I liked about Germany is more practical education. As I, I think mentioned earlier, we had a lot of life projects. Uh, for example, in our MNA course, we worked with editors and uh, Blackstone with uh, in our other course we worked with EY on their live project in one in two of our courses we worked with Porsche Consulting and Porsche AG so in most of our uh, curriculum courses we usually work on live project with a company so the company representatives come uh, to your classes they give you a project on the first day and by the end of the course you have to submit your presentations or present in front of them so that's a very good exposure and you get to meet with the people uh, in the company and you already have your first impressions which is very useful when you are applying for a job later yeah that's true mm. so i think that would be the major benefits <laughs> i saw or uh, when we discussed about an mba in germany oh great okay so of course uh, then my question would be um do you think there are some uh, yeah disadvantages of doing mba in germany over other countries yes i would not say disadvantages but uh, yes there are some uh, problems that a student or a candidate might face. 
Firstly, MBA is a new program in Germany. So not, and if you know, or, uh, for the information of all the listeners, Germany is made, or German economy is made up of the middle stand companies. So 90% of the economy is run by these middle stand companies, which are not that large, like big MNCs, but are not small, like SMEs or something like that. And these middle stand companies are now opening up to the international candidates, international programs. So the knowledge about MBA or what an MBA graduate really is, is not that uh, wide. So in beginning, you might face uh, some times <laughs> in a situation that they don't know what MBA is actually, then you have to explain them. Because in Germany, the culture is usually you do your bachelor's, take your gap year or something, then do your master's and later do a PhD. And MBA is a bit new uh, course here. So sometimes you face uh, difficulties in explaining them. But now I have seen a lot of posts coming out which specifically mentions that you should have an MBA degree. So that is a good thing coming up. That's yes. nice. Yeah. Second limitation I would say is about German language. Uh, see, as an MBA, you are in a management position now and you will have to talk to your colleagues, people who are working in your team, stakeholders, which are usually German companies. If you are in consulting or strategy, your clients would be these middle stand companies. So you would require uh, a good level of German. I would not say that. German language hinders in getting you a job, but with good German, it opens up a lot of opportunities where you can apply. It is like if you learn more of the local language, you'll get more opportunities and higher salaries to go forward with. All right. Actually, that's an important point. So uh, for the MBA itself uh, or for, while applying, I don't need to show that I know German. And I guess the courses are also in English. Yes. Right? So for applying to these MBA programs, you don't need German language because these are very, very international programs and they are taught. Uh, everything is taught. All documentation, all courses are in English. You don't need German for that. After that, when you're living in a country like Germany and when you really want to go for good jobs, you should know a bit of German. Even if the official language is not German, still, I think if you have colleagues who are German, they usually talk uh, among them in German. And I think that is a very common thing in among everyone. That's true. So you, you yourself, did you have to, did you spend time learning German? I think you speak fluent German. Um, I don't I think that fluent German. Basically, I started my German once I got an admit at uh, Wehau. I think it was October or November 2017. So I had to go in March. So I did my A1 and A2 level in India. And I did my B1 level here in Germany. So currently I'm on B2 level. So I can speak German. I can interact with in German. But I'm not that fluent. But it's enough for you to, let's say, if, uh, I mean, at least in a professional situation or in social situations, it's enough for you or you are able to communicate. Yes, yes. at B1, B2 you... level, you are already able to communicate. The thing is that uh, once you reach C1 level, then you are professionally fluent as well. So I can go in German meetings, I can interact with them, I can put forward my point. But I'm, for me, sometimes I feel I cannot negotiate that good uh, in German comparatively to that of English. So I still need to improve and I'm still working on it to improve my German. Okay. That's nice. Yeah, so um, I think my main then the question would be like in general, um, after MBA uh, in Germany, what do you think uh, are the job prospects like? Yes. So uh, job prospects in Germany uh, depend on multiple factors. I think in one of our posts in our Facebook group, MBA in Germany, we have talked about it. In Germany, we call it as a triple change. So what does this triple change stands for is first, the change in geography. Second, the change in industry. And third, the change in role. If you are an expat, if you are already moving to Germany from someplace out, you are already doing a first change. That is change in geography. Second change is, for example, if uh, you are from automotive industry and you want to continue in automotive industry, then it is fine. But if you want to move to some other industry, then you are changing your industry as well. That means you might not have experience in that industry. Third thing is, if, for example, you are uh, having work experience in product management role, but now you want to go in investment banking or marketing or something else, that is what we call as third change. Doing a triple change in Germany is very difficult. 
it's not like us where if you see the mba graduates uh, just go there and you can easily switch your career for example if you're an it guy you then switch to investment banking and then start doing it that is not how it works in germany they usually assess you even with your mba uh, with what work experience you have or what is the background of work experience uh, and what industry what roles you have been working in if you want to have a very big switch then you might have to start as a fresher even after your mba and mba in germany is usually done uh, by people who already have 5 to 6 years of work ex so they don't prefer to start somewhere new but they rather try to do a double change or sometimes a single change even if they want to just change their geography and grow in the same roles i'm not saying that the triple change is not possible it is possible but then it totally depends upon you how you are presenting yourself uh, in a job or how is your work experience a lot of people join internships in such uh, companies and then they are able to do a triple change that is very good thing that happens in germany that if you can do an internship with a company they can see how you have been working what talent you have then you can still go for a triple change but um, in totality there are a lot of jobs in germany Uh, to be very fair, there are a lot of openings, economies growing. There are a lot of startups now coming in. There are a lot of uh, companies now who do not require German. For example, Amazon Munich is completely English-based uh, center, so you do not require German in any of their rules. Uh, Henkel, Dusseldorf, it six seventy percent of the rules do not require German. Siemens. Fifty uh, percent of the rules do not require German. Multiple startups in Berlin do not require German. So that is one good thing, and I think Germany is moving more towards an international culture now. Yeah, that's true. It's an interesting concept you mentioned this triple change. So um, yeah, you you explained this on on your Facebook group. So maybe uh, yeah. Uh, so this is a group about MBA in Germany, yes, right? Yes. And we got to know about this because uh, during our MBA we had a lot of career coaches. Coaches that visited Vihau, and we had personal sessions with them, uh, development sessions, and they told us about how these changes happen and how we can overcome the changes in our professional life. Cool. Okay, that's nice. Um. Yeah. And do you think um there are any other things that uh, one should keep in mind about job prospects in Germany? Yes, I think uh, one very important aspect in Germany, especially related to jobs, is uh references by alumni by your by someone whom you know plays a very very important role here if you have good connections uh with someone in a company and that is how that is what the concept of mba is and what happens during mba is you develop your personal skills but you also get in touch with a network of alumni and a person to open a door in any company is very important in germany most of the roles or most of the jobs are done by references if you start simply applying you will never get a, a role so that would be one recommendation if you're looking for jobs yes apply but uh, first go to the uh, linkedin check out the roles see if there is a connection if there is not a connection then try contacting someone people are usually very helpful then you can interact with them what is the company about company culture role and then take their help and then apply and this will also good look in your cover letters when you say that okay you have already discussed with the employees of such company and you know what company stands for so instead of just pressing apply and submitting your cvs do talk to people do connect with people and then apply for the roles that's a very valid tip that's and that true. has worked for me to be very true i got my internship at volkswagen financial services because we had an alumni from vehau who was working there i interacted with him he saw that there was an opening i applied and then i got the role and similarly for violent we had a couple of alumni i was interacting with them i saw a role i asked them they referred me and i got a role okay that's that's good that's great yeah that's definitely true the network play is a very important role and doing this research is very important yes. for sure yeah so in, in in all in all um i should understand it as that you would uh, recommend uh people to do an mba in germany if they are considering doing an mba yes yes for sure i think mba in germany is growing very fast and you have a lot of opportunities 
I would also recommend you the or the candidates the moment you get an admit start uh, working on your uh, german the better german you have the better salaries and uh, better roles you would be able to get into after your mba all right that's great yeah thanks a lot akshay for for your time um yeah it was very very a lot of information and uh, hopefully we will uh, also in the next episode talk about uh, Uh, how to apply for an MBA in Germany? Yes, for sure, Paras. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was lovely talking to you and sharing the information. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's all, folks. Thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe to our podcast and check out our blog on IndiaToGermany dot com. See you in the next episode.